so just for all of you guys on Instagram, hello, hello. Um, so we're getting started right now. Um, as always, I am here with my wonderful co-host, my dear um, Monica, who is over on, you know, those places, YouTube and Facebook and Zoom. We are Zoom versus Instagram versus Facebook versus Zoom, wait, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. All right. So all for the best prizes. All for all the right. best. All for bragging rights. <laughs> all for bragging rights. <laughs> all for exactly. bragging rights at Sacramento Public Library, where books are just the beginning. Books are just the beginning. All right. So a couple Ooh. of announcements before we get started. Number one, we will be going on a break starting in September. Um, so if you are looking for cool things to do in the Sacramento Public Library, just a reminder that you are um, uh, you can go to our events page so that sac li sac library dot org slash events for updates. Um, so we are going on a break in starting in September. Also, again, like up on our screen right now, we will be featuring an interview with our artist Nikki Rodriguez and Samuel Soto Sainz. Oh gosh, no, I did it wrong again. You better correct me. Nikki Rodriguez and Samuel Soto Science will be joining us for a new segment, um, Artist Alley. Thank you, California State Library Grant, for providing us the funding so we can have the amazing talent with us today. Did we get everything, Kim? Is that everything? Are you ready to rock That's everything. I'm, I, I'm really, I have to apologize to Sam because I'm saying his name wrong and he probably hates me. So I apologize. Um, but you guys, this is going to be a great interview afterwards. So please join us on Zoom in, or uh, Zoom and YouTube live. Okay, here we go. And also, Ready. if I am quiet, it, my friend Monica is speaking. So just so that you know. Okay, Ooh, I got this. All right, let's start with our first question. Are you ready, Monica? Yes, you are. I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. Question number one. In My Hero Academia, All Might's signature moves are named after which country? Is it A, the United Kingdom, B, the United States, or C, China? If you know the answer, put it in the chat. If you don't know the answer, place a really good guess. I bet you can probably guess on it. All right. 33.33% chance of getting the answer correct. <laughs> That's right. And it looks like we already have an answer on Facebook. We've got an answer on Zoom. I don't have anything on Instagram yet. We've got anything on YouTube. I'm going to guess that YouTube's going to guess C. I don't know about you guys. All right. And they are. YouTube is once again guessing C, always <laughs> a strong C. Zoom is guessing B and team Facebook is guessing B. And uh, YouTube is reiterating C with like four exclamation points. <laughs> okay, well, I don't think I've got anybody playing quite yet on Instagram. So we're gonna, I'm gonna read that question one more time and Instagram can just have a chance to catch up. Okay, so in My Hero Academia, all my signature moves are named after which country? Well, it is B, the United B. States. Bow, bow, bow. Like Detroit smash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so that's a point on the board for Team Facebook and Team, and team Zoom. That bah, bah, bah. is awesome. Just a reminder, oh, I forgot. Our our awesome, awesome artwork is done by our local teens. Um, so just a reminder that local teens are doing some really great artwork that we are sharing today. All right, let's go to our next question. Ready? So in Bleach, what is Japanese, what is a Japanese hononym? for Ichigo. Okay, is it A, 15, B, apple, or C, T? If you know the answer, <laughs> put it in the chat. If you don't know the answer, of course, place a guess. Um, so in Bleach, what is a Japanese homonym for Ichigo? Is it A, 15, B, apple, or C, T? So I think the first question is, is what is a homonym? <laughs> and okay. uh and what a random array of answers a homonym <laughs> you know that's a really good question because um you know i had to look that up and then i forgot what it was but i think it's something that means the same thing right do you think well, it's, it's, the, it's the same thing no not the same thing it's uh something that sounds like that it has different meanings yeah yeah right right <laughs> it's like all read good and read 
So on Facebook, we have ans two separate answers on Facebook. David is still saying B, but Sophia says A. Ooh, it's David versus Sophia. I'm All right, you two duke it out in the chat and like argue for your answer. <laughs> All yes. right, so we have confirmation from <laughs> our, our <laughs> guest <laughs> artist, Nikki. <laughs> that, um, words that sound alike but mean different things is what a homonym is. So thank, thank you. you for that. Um, okay. You learn so a new let's, thing. <laughs> let's go for our answer. I still don't have anybody over on Instagram, so that's all right. So in Bleach, what is a Japanese homonym for Ichigo? Well, it is A, 15. So if you guessed 15, you guessed it right. If you didn't guess 15, you didn't guess it right. Hey, good <laughs> job over there, um, Sophia. Yeah, so that means <laughs> Sophia got it for Facebook. Oh, I'm going to give it to them. Sophia, it's A. Ichigo means 15. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Thanks, Sophia Louis. <laughs> All right. I guess we can go on to our next question. Are you ready there? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. In Seven Deadly Sins, Meliodas' symbol is the what? Is it A, fox? B, serpent? Or C, dragon? Okay, <laughs> if you know the answer. Well, put it in the chat. You guys know how this thing works. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, oh. If you don't, please a guess. All right, so is Meliodas the symbol of Fox? Oh, hey, I have a player on Instagram. Woohoo! Yay! Meliodas, Meliodas's uh, seven deadly sin symbol. Is it a fox, a serpent, or a dragon? All very Ooh, cool. We had all sorts animals. of answers on, whoa, on Facebook. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, David says B for Facebook, but Sophia says C for Facebook. Are you an answer in the chat? One will win. Also, Sophia is wise. Thank you, YouTube. You're such a good team player. <laughs> YouTube is all about the C. That's why. Sophia YouTube is C. YouTube is C. Says C. Okay, so we've got answers from places. Did we get an answer from Zoom? I can't remember. I'm Zoom. Sorry. Oh, we just got just it. Just now. Yeah, they said C. They think it's C. Okay, so in Seven Deadly Sins, Meliodas's symbol is the. See, that is correct. It is the dragon. He is the dragon of wrath, I believe. Somebody Zoom. correct me if I'm wrong. He <laughs> also too. looks like a very young child all the time. Um, but he kicks a lot of butt, so that's cool. All right. All right. So on the board, we have Facebook with three points, Zoom with two points, and YouTube one point, and nothing's happened on Instagram, but you never know. People can always drop in because it does happen. <gasps> so we have Facebook ahead right now. That's <laughs> good old Sophia. All right. Let's go to our next question. We're going to go for a little bit. That's okay. By the way, JM Kelly, you got it close. Maybe you'll get it this time. You're doing great over here on Instagram. Yes, All yes. All right. Okay, so let's go to our next question in Tokyo Revengers. Um, oh, Zoom got everything right, by the way. Did you? Yeah, three questions. Right. Okay. Three tally marks, <laughs> three points. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so in Tokyo Revengers, Takamichi Hanagaki um, time travels back to what? Is it A, elementary school, B, middle school, or C, high school? If you know the answer, <laughs> put it in the chat. If you don't, place a guess. It's either going to be A, B, or C, so like, for real slow. <laughs> so um, Zoom, Team Zoom has wanted to announce that they've gotten everything right, they haven't missed any, and did not cheat us. They said, don't cheat us. So noted, noted no Team cheating. Zoom. Okay, All right. No cheating. Okay. No cheating on uh, Zoom over there. Okay. <laughs> Facebook. So so over oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. We've got, we've already got answers coming in. Sophia Louis B for real slow. That's what they said. Zoom also B and strangely David agrees. Team oh. Facebook, LOL. All right. <laughs> if you haven't seen Tokyo Revengers yet, um, it is on Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. So um, in Tokyo Revengers, Takamichi Hanagaki time travels back to you. Well, the answer is B, middle school. So I didn't have an answer over on Instagram yet, but that's okay. Instagram, please stick around. We are going to get there. You guys are doing awesome as always. And Facebook is killing it. <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> David got it right this time too. So Tough times you too, but you'll pull through. You always do. <laughs> What's the next question? So the next question is a, a, an anime I was binge watching 
recently, so whew, I don't know if I know this answer though. Okay, here we go. <laughs> in Jujutsu Kaisen, what does the principle of Kyoto Jujutsu Hai use as a weapon? Is it A, fan, B, guitar, or C, cane? <laughs> So in Jujutsu Kaisen, what does the principle of Kyoto Jujutsu Hai use as a weapon? Is it A, fan, B, guitar, or C, cane? Um, he <laughs> is kind of an old, older dude, right? So I don't know, which one is it? Those are all things you could really take somebody out with. I was thinking like a fan, like an oscillating fan, where it's like, but I, then I realized probably more like a fan, like you yeah, 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 fan, fan yourself, like a hand fan, but then, no. Use it as a assassination Weapon. tool. Yeah, with like steel. Yeah. All yeah. right. So <laughs> Nikki is participating in saying B, the only series I know so far. Thanks, Nikki. Um, team Facebook says B. Is that Zoom coming in with also the answer B. for B? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna guess. Oh, we got nothing. YouTube, YouTube's has got to be doing C. So let's see what our answer <laughs> is. So in Jujutsu Kaisen, which is the principle of Kyoto, Jujutsu Hai uses a weapon. Well, he, <laughs> he uses B, a guitar. So ba -ba -ba. guess who is right? Both our our um, friend Nikkei and uh, Nikki. Sorry, Nikki, um, and everybody else. Except for Instagram, because Instagram doesn't know it yet, but that's okay. Instagram, you're still, you're still here. You're still doing it. You got this. Okay. No, oh, except for they just left. C okay. for Kane. I'm still laughing very hard on that one. C for Kane. That's so clever. So Isn't clever. All right. Let's go to our next question. Our All next right. question is about Seraph of the End, which has this amazing picture that we just got through our summer reading. So, hey, speaking of which, if you haven't gotten your summer reading prices, summer reading is technically over, but you can still get your prices if you all if you um, haven't done them yet. So come into the library. We will take care of you. Mm -hmm. Not in the way it's of Seraph of the End, though. OK, OK. <laughs> no. All right. So no. at the beginning of Seraph of the End, who does you think of as his real family? Is it A, his parents? B, Farid, or C, Mika. If you know the answer, guess what? Tell us what it is. <laughs> <laughs> if right. not, place a guess. Zoom is coming in with C right away, right out of the, right out of the cage, the container, <laughs> the, the capsule. <laughs> so we have Zoom C. Also, that artwork is amazing. I was very excited to see it. Me when it too. came into, across our inboxes for this segment, I was like, yes, very, mm. very pleased. Oh, team Facebook, David says B, Sifa Louis says C. I haven't seen that one yet. Same, Ooh. same, Sophia, same. And then the team YouTube is saying CC or perhaps closed captioning repeatedly. So <laughs> once All again, right, so Zoom C. Should, should we say what the answer is then? So at the beginning of Seraph of the End, who does you think of as a real family? Well, that is C, Mika. Um, and if you are a fan of really gory vampire um, stuff, I don't know, if really gory. Yes, of vampire things. Check out Seraph of the End. All Perhaps right. a graphic novel? Yeah. A graphic graphic novel? What? Graphic it's anime? not that graphic. I mean, it is a teen novel still. <laughs> Things well, happen. That's what it sounds like. It is still graphic. I don't know. All okay. right. Facebook has gotten every single question right. So six points are on the board. Zoom has five points. YouTube, one point. Hey, I <laughs> thought Zoom had all the points. Are you cheating on Zoom again? Me? Yeah. No, I don't have a bias. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. No, no, no. I thought Zoom has all the points and YouTube has all the points. Sometimes Facebook has all the points. Zoom got, Zoom them, all, got them all. Ah. All right. Let's go <laughs> to our next question, though. Okay, well, you guys. Fun. Now we're talking Naruto's kid. Bum, Which bum, kid? Bum, bum. Boruto, of course. In episode 129 of Boruto, he meets a young which character? Is it A, Naruto, mm. B, mm. Goku, or C, Conan? Ah, uh, I don't know. Boruto meets Goku. Hmm. 
Boruto means Naruto. Hmm. I can say as a librarian working in a library, someone said Boruto, and I was like, don't you mean Naruto? And they're like, look. <laughs> The look at this teen's eye was like, haven't you heard? And I'm like, no. <laughs> oh. That's okay. Still learning new things. All right. So on team Facebook, Sophia says A. Zoom says A. And David is hitting B. I think his keyboard is broken. <laughs> says team Facebook. And to YouTube saying a young Conan O'Brien. It's not Conan O'Brien, YouTube. But, but thank you for the, the C vote. Okay, so in episode 29, Boruto meets a young who? It's Naruto. So that is A. So if you guessed A, you got it right, which is almost everybody. <laughs> I do appreciate this tip from Kyla Carrolls, who says, I know he needs Naruto, but I'm not sure if it's episode 129. <gasps> I don't know. I couldn't tell you the episode. Facts. Yeah. I think that's facts there. You That's, know, that is facts. We should probably double check that one. <laughs> True. I did not actually include I, uh, <laughs> Zoom. I assumed our person was right with the number. So, uh, yeah. Huh. All right. Well, we know they meet each other. <laughs> Sorry if we're wrong about the, the number, you guys. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're going to go to our next question, though, which is only vaguely anime related. Are you ready? Vaguely <laughs> animated related. Could you say it's anime adjacent? <laughs> anime adjacent like last anime time adjacent. all right so in the new upcoming he-man and the masters of the universe <laughs> who is a robot this character is a robot which of the characters is a robot in the new upcoming he-man and the masters of the universe which i did not even know was a thing so you guys i'm sorry about this question so it's he-man 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 <laughs> oh it's out by the way apparently Okay, <laughs> so is it A, Orko, B, Adam, or C, Cringer? <laughs> I'm sorry, our, our librarian on Zoom has binged the whole He-Man and the Masters of the, Un of the Universe, so uh, now we know. <laughs> I don't think it's apologized for the librarian who binged it. They are very happy. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I was apologizing for laughing, not because of our librarian. Our librarian is pretty <laughs> rad, so not going to knock on them. All okay. Right. Team Facebooks, David says B and Kyla says B. Sophia says A, question mark. Oh. oh. I'm going to guess that our friends over on, uh, 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 you know, YouTube, we're going to say C. I don't even know who Cringer is, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the answer, though. In the new upcoming He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, A, Orko is a robot. <laughs> and the drawing is unbelievably awesome. Thank you so much, Sophia, for saying that, because that is one amazing sailor He-Man. So Senpai? Senpai Spillator? Senpai Skeletor? Mm -hmm. That's what it says. It's just mm -hmm. written really pretty cursive, like very like chef's kiss percursive. Oh. <laughs> it's beautiful and I love it. I love it so much. Uh, I wish I had that artistic talent, Aww, I it's... tell you what. <laughs> All right, are we ready for another, another vampire show? Whatever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ah, our next question is, oh, wait, are we ready? We're ready. ready. Oh, yeah, we're ready. Yeah. We're ready. Yeah. Yeah. I was okay. like, I, you built up to something. And I was just like, yes. <laughs> so in the case study of Vanitas, what does Vanitas use against the vampires? Is it A, a scythe, B, a white cat, or C, a grimoire? Grimoire? Grimoire. How do you say that word? Grimoire. Okay. Grimoire. A white cat, like, like a certain kitty from a certain show called to the moon hmm. it's not that white cat <laughs> oh, it's not artemis boo boo <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna read that one one more time in the case study of vanitas what does vanitas use against the vampires is it a a scythe b a white cat or c a grimoire okay grimoire, grimoire? i'm doing it again 
Okay. All right. Team Facebook, Sophia says A, question mark, and Zoom is very confident with their C. Oh, cool. Which, by <laughs> the way, the case study of Anishas is also, we have mm. that as a manga, right? YouTube is thinking, hmm, and Team mm. Facebook, Kyla Carroll says C. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. C's and C's and C's. And Pandora Hearts. That's the other thing that that author writes. That's what I was thinking. Sorry. Cat all right. So in the case study of Vanitas, we got all of our answers in. What is it? What is Vanitas used against the vampires? Well, it is C, a grimoire. Yay, YouTube. You got a point. <laughs> Stick it out long enough, you'll we get a point. Too. Go, YouTube. We got some really cool Pokemon um, artwork in the next couple of slides. So it's pretty exciting. I love how like our producer set it up so it looks like they're battling. <laughs> anyway. All right. I'm gonna move on then. How are we doing with scores? Um, so <laughs> the left side of my um scoreboard is full of tally marks because Zoom and Facebook are killing it. Uh, YouTube, you did make it two points onto the board. And Instagram, we appreciate you and so glad you exist. We you appreciate still on the board. you. You're still on the board. Thank and you, Instagram. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe when we get to the video portion, we'll get a point. I don't know. We'll see. The video portion is the awesome part anyway. So, you know. All right. Let's go to our next question. So, in next Chainsaw question. Man, how does Denji transform? Does he draw out a sword, pull a dog's tail, or his dog's tail in particular, or use a magic wand? I'll let Harry Potter. <laughs> Okay, so in Chainsaw Man, how does Denji transform? Is it A, by drawing out a sword, B, pulling his dog's tail, or C, using a magic wand? If you know the answer, put it in the chat. If you don't know the, um, <laughs> if you don't know the answer, place a guess. Our friends over on Facebook said, well, you're a Chainsaw Man, Harry. You have to do the I voice. Agree. You have to do the voice and be like, you're a Chainsaw Man, Harry. Oh. That was an awful example, but... Sophia Louis says C. Kyla Carroll says, ah, it's B! Exclamation cool. point. <laughs> <laughs> I am, um, your Hagrid is better than my Hagrid though. So good job, Monica. <laughs> Just pretend you're like a pirate who works at a wizarding school and then you got it. <laughs> then there you go. So we have <laughs> Facebook is saying C, Facebook is saying B. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. All right, well, let's see what the answer is. I'm going to guess YouTube is saying C. So we got in Chainsaw Man, how does Denji transform? Does he A, pull out his sword, B, pull his dog's tail, or C, use a magic wand like Harry Potter? But not like Hagrid, because Hagrid's is in his... Wait, umbrella. Umbrella, thank you. Oof. You're welcome. <laughs> Harry Potter trivia dude all right okay well the answer is b ah! team facebook another ooh 10 points that's okay sophia sophia we know that you meant to press b and you got it right so <laughs> i meant to press b but my finger press crying emoji Aww. <laughs> sophia just want to take a moment to say we appreciate appreciate you being here every week every month Every month, awesome. we appreciate that so much. Thank and even, you. And for the participants who are only here like every other month, we appreciate you too. We appreciate thank all you. of you. Thank you. Thank Just you thank for you. being here. Yeah, we love it. Thank you for hanging out with us online for the past, you know, year <laughs> and a half or whatever it is. It's been fun. All right, yeah. so let's go with our last uh, Sophia says, I need to stop multitasking and take trivia seriously. <laughs> We all need to stop multitasking, so it's okay. I get it. <laughs> okay, so we're on, on to our last question before we go to our music questions. And, oh, I think we might have to do the tiebreaker, depending on how everybody is going. All right, are we ready? So in Uzumaki, that's some Junjo Ito, if I remember correct. Junji Ito, right? In Uzumaki, um, what plagues the town of uh, Kurozu Cho? Is it A, cats, B, slugs, or C, spirals? Okay. Uh, if you know the answer, put it in the chat. If you don't, 
place a guest. In Uzumaki, what plagues the town of uh, Kurozu Sho? Is it A, cats, B, slugs, or C, spirals? You know the answer? Put it in the chat. Hi, NT Leaves. And um, if you don't place a guess, cats would never be a plague. I'm with you, YouTube. Cats are amazing. Okay. So in Uzumaki. Oh, we have answers everywhere. Should we go with them? All right. Well, everybody says C, which is spirals. And that is correct. Correct. In Uzumaki, what plagues the town? Um, it's C, spirals. So it looks like we have going into this part A to a tie. All right, you guys, we're gonna go with our online question. Okay, let's put up those videos. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Can you name this anime? All right, you guys, is that a hero no Sora, run with the wind, or high Q? If you know the answer, please tell it, let us know. Oh, Sophia, you are totally on it with an exclamation C. All right. Oh, 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 me too, Sophia. All right, so I got answers everywhere except for Instagram, but that's okay. Is it a hero no Sora, run with the wind, or high Q? You guys, I know, you know it is high Q. Hey, thank you, NT Leaves. Good job, good guess. All right, you guys, let's go to our next question. Are you ready for our next question? I think we are ready. All right, you guys, can you, can you name this anime? Is it Dagna Ropa, B, Assassination Classroom, or C, Angel Beats? Oh, sorry, Kyla, you're right. Those new cats did give away the last one, but maybe you guys can guess this one. I'm going to run it through again. The, can you name this anime? Is it A, Dagna Ropa, B, Assassination Classroom, or C, Angel Beats? All right, I'm gonna play that one more time. All right, so the answer to that one, of course, is B. It looks like everybody knows all of our songs. So, hey, good job. I love this one because the, well, Koro Sensei. Yeah, he's the, like the best teacher, best teacher ever. I don't know, we have a tie right now between Facebook and Zoom. Hey, producers, do I have, you know, a few seconds to play one more video? What do you guys think? All right, we're going to go with our last video. Let's see if you get it. It's kind of an oldie, but a goodie. Let's go. All right. So. All right, can you guys name this anime? Is it A, Yu Yu Hakusho? I can never say that right. I'm really, really sorry. B, Dragon Ball Z, or C, Bobo, Bobo, Bobo. Wait, Bobo, Bobo, Bobo. You know, the guy with the nose. Thing. Okay, let's play that one more time. All right, you guys, I don't see any answers yet on YouTube, Facebook, Zoom, I'll say. Let's see, it looks like uh, Zoom is saying B, Facebook B, Sophia Louie B, and Kylie Carroll says, I'm just guessing B, just off the art. Ooh, B, right off of the art, that is correct. The answer is B, so you know what you guys, for our last one. Um, we're just going to say it's a tie and we're going to move it on is. to our awesome <laughs> interview. So just really quickly, you guys, for those of you on Instagram, take a moment in just a few minutes, we're going to have 
um, a great interview on Zoom, Facebook, and you, well, I'm sorry, Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, the email is there if you want to go to our Zoom link. Make sure um, to take a minute. We're going to take a little quick break and we will be right back with you with our awesome interview. So I hope that you can join us over on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom. And remember, we're going to take a quick break or a, a break next month. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Have a good rest of your month. Bye. Introducing Samuel Soto Sainz and Nikki Rodriguez. Nikki hello, hello. is a queer Puerto Rican comic artist, flatter, and colorist. She's the creator of two ongoing webcomics, The Unlucky Ones in the Edge of Nowhere and The Smoke in the Mirror. In 2018, she started making autobiographical zines exploring mental health, the impermanence of time and memory, her existential ennui, and the meaning of home and homesickness in connection to being of the Puerto Rican diaspora. She continues to explore these subjects in her fiction comics, looking to find ways in which traditional comic narrative form can be deconstructed through depictions of ephemerality as it relates to emotion, memory, and time. She holds a BFA in animation and an MFA in comics from California College of the Arts. Sam Soto is a Latino comic artist based in the Pacific Northwest. His work is heavily influenced by his lifelong love of manga and anime. It's been his dream to be a published creator of manga in the West. In 2019, he graduated with an MFA in comics from the California College of the Arts in San Francisco. He most recently had a short story published in Saturday AM as part of the 2021 Summer of Manga event. Sam collaborates on all his comics with his brother, Lucas Soto, who is the writer. It is our absolute honor to introduce Nikki Rodriguez and Samuel Soto Sainz. Hey. You are live. Yay! <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to our Artist Alley segment here with Sacramento Public Library. I'm Monica, coming back over from <laughs> Anime Trivia and with our guests who are going to do a presentation of their artwork and process. And teens, you're welcome to pop the questions in the chat. Um, they'll get related to me and I'll be able to ask Nikki and Sam those questions. So welcome. <laughs> Hi. Let me. Sorry, I'm pulling up the, the presentation right now. It is all good. Just let me know when you're ready. We'll let you share the screen and we'll let you talk about your artwork and we'll pop some questions in along the way. How's that sound? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready now. Yay. The window has been collected. Yes. Can everyone see that? Mm, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, my name's Nikki. I am a comic artist and a flatter. And for anyone who doesn't know what platting is, like I'll talk about it a little bit more when I'm going through my work, but it's basically where you separate the spaces for different colors in a comic. So that way the person who's like doing the final color has a super easy time doing it. <laughs> um, so these are just, all the zines I've made since I started making zines in 2018. Um, basically, like as the introduction said, I studied, I studied animation at California College of the Arts in Oakland because I really wanted to just tell stories. Honestly, I was really inspired by a lot of different animated series growing up, but didn't really realize that art was something I could pursue in college until right as I was graduating high school. So I did that and in the program, I kind of focused mostly on character design. And by the time it came to graduate, just kind of like seeing and understanding more about what the industry was about and what was like most necessary in terms of the like job goal, um, which is primarily animators, especially like 3D animators or more technical aspects like sound effects, um, visual effects, like that kind of animation. And that wasn't what I wanted to do. That was also not something I had like a huge skill set in just based on like the classes that were offered. Um, so I kind of figured like I need to take some kind of a break to build up my art to where I want it to be and also kind of give myself more time to figure out like what am I going to do now that I'm done with college. And <laughs> for some reason, I decided getting a master's right after was that way to do that. 
so I think it was May of 2017, which was my last semester in the comics program. And then the first semester, or animation program. So the first semester of the comics program, I think was in July that year. So I basically had like a one month summer in between <laughs> pursuing another degree, which is like a terrible idea in hindsight. So don't do that. Give yourself more than a month. Um, but it was still a really beneficial choice. I mean, I got to better my art in a way where I could feel like satisfied with um, kind of where my projected process was going. And it also helped me a lot in the more narrative aspect in terms of like how to write a compelling story and how to explore different stories to tell and kind of like different formats within that as opposed to like the traditional, um, I think, it's called like the type A, type B storytelling model that you get most uh, major film animation studios like Disney and Pixar. And I was pretty much freelancing part-time. Like I, before I moved to Denver, which is where I'm at now, I just lived in and around Berkeley and Oakland for like seven years pursuing my degrees. And once I graduated and I was just freelancing on the side doing like illustrated projects here and there while also teaching at the after school program that I was in in Oakland, um, but then the pandemic happened, <laughs> which is why I moved here, um, because our site unfortunately closed down. So I've been like full-time freelance since then. And I've had the chance to work on a couple of really cool projects. Um, one of them got released, I think a little over a month and a half ago, it was this uh, charity comic anthology through global comics that supported local comic book stores that were like at risk of closing or to like keep them uh, open and find ways to expand their programming, kind of like what we're doing here within the library. Um, so that was really cool. And then a children's book that it hasn't been announced yet. Uh, I just got like the cover reveal. I don't know when that's gonna be announced, but it's coming soon, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, and these are just different pictures of like uh, tables, table setups I would have at Zine Fest. So Zine Fest are basically like mini comic fests. Um, they're more like the independent underground zine community and a zine for anyone who doesn't know, it's like, it comes from like the word magazine, but it's basically just a mini comic of any sort. And it could be super experimental and abstract. Um, it's like pretty DIY, it's like you, anyone can make a zine because you just need a few sheets of paper and like any kind of writing or drawing utensil. Um, and being in the Bay, aside from having those two programs there that I studied, it was really integral to like my formation as like an artist, a comic artist, and just like understanding my identity better because the Bay, the Bay Area has like such a robust history when it comes to like civil rights and the queer community like there's just so much of that that is interwoven with all the different zine artists that come out of that space and it was really nice and welcoming being able to have a format that i could easily access in order to like explore myself and like my different parts of my identity and like how that contributes to storytelling <coughs> And yeah, I think my first zine fest was the San Francisco zine fest, um, 2017 or 2018. That's actually coming up next week virtually, of course. Um, but yeah, it was just like really fun. It let me travel across different parts of the country. Before the pandemic, I actually got into Glasgow zine fest, which is like over in the UK. But it was literally right before the pandemic, so like. I did not buy tickets and then it like got canceled. So like I lucked out in a way, like not being stuck in Europe because of that. Um, but Zine Fest have just been really fun and it's a great way to like see a bunch of different artists and like see different kinds of stories and comic making and just like really expand the horizon of kind of like what it means to make art or like make a story. Um, so it was like pretty fundamental to me getting to where I am now. Um, <laughs> and so I've been working on two web comics right now. It's kind of like a new foray, like just I've changed my whole kind of like paradigm being full time freelance right now because of the pandemic. But web comics are actually like my entry into comics, like 
think it was the tail end of junior high, right when I was like about to start high school. Um, I wasn't, I think I just gotten like my own digital tablet at that point, but I had no idea how to use it. So I wasn't really drawing with it yet, but I was able to kind of like, through my friends, explore different drawing spaces they were using. Like, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of this one website, but it was like a, a collaborative like drawing space. So it's like you log in and it's kind of like a chat room, but it's a blank can canvas that you can all draw on at once. I feel like the name's gonna come to me once this is over. Um, <laughs> it's like on the tip of my tongue, but through that, and like talking through with friends through that space, I got to like discover web comics. And I was like, oh, all these stories are like really cool. You could just like make your own comic. Um, <clears throat> it's like so dry in Denver right now. <laughs> it's okay, um, it's fine. But like, even though I was like, oh wow, I could literally just make a comic. I could read all these cool stories. It was just like, I had access to a bunch of things that I didn't realize was so accessible. Um, but I didn't really pursue as much as I loved it and like reading through them. I didn't really pursue making my own stories at that point because I just didn't know how. So I was pretty much at the state of like, I'm just gonna, gonna admire all the pretty things I'm seeing on all these different comics and just like keep a tab on these artists as I like move through like my own drawing journey. Um, and then I kind of pivoted to doing web comics again now during the pandemic because I'm at this point where I wanted to query and I can like talk about that a little bit more in like a Q&A but basically it's just like trying to find a literary agent so that way I could have more opportunities to work on more creative projects and collaborate with writers or like put out my own work in a graphic novel format um, but with the support of someone who will like make sure I and paid fairly and I'm given an adequate timeline for all the work that it entails and things like that. Um, so web comics was kind of a way to help me along that journey in the sense of like, as I was writing my story and like planning it out, it was a way for other people to see it, especially since I didn't have Zoom Fest to do anymore, especially like while they've moved on to like virtual spaces. And I'm glad to have that. There's just so much that is like, I don't know, like really palpable whenever you're like behind a table and you just got mm -hmm. people coming up and it's like, you just get to talk to them about what you enjoy, about what you just made or like, it's a really nice experience where you get to connect with someone in a way you hadn't expected before. And like moving into these virtual zine fest spaces, it's like some of that is like, unfortunately lost. It's just like inevitable. Um, but I still wanted to like put these stories out there for people to read. Um, and because they're both very different stories from how I approach my zine making, it was just like, it would be so much time and money to like print these out, especially without zine fest to like know that I'll be able to sell them or like consign them. Cause I used to put zines up in different comic stores around the Bay area. I think Silver Sprocket in San Francisco still has some, mm -hmm. but I haven't explored around Denver, all the different spaces near me that take consignments and stuff like that. So it's just like my bubble of like experience has like drastically shrunk because of the pandemic. But my friend just like reintroduced me to like the world of web comics. I was like, oh my God, why haven't I been doing this <laughs> for like a long time now? It's like, it's right there. Um, and it was definitely like, I had to like shift gears in terms of like formatting and how I plot out my stories and like how many pages I put with an update. Um, to make sure I'm not hindering the reading experience, especially since these are two long form stories that are the, my first endeavor into like long form narrative. Um, but yeah, it's been like a lot of fun and I've learned a lot and I'm just like still querying the second one, the unlucky ones in the edge of nowhere um, while I like keep it hosted on these global comics and webtoons right now. That's where they live is like web comics. Um, and then to like, just slip in some of like my inspirations, um, I was definitely heavily inspired and like mostly impacted by anime and manga in my decision to like pursue art or like even just start drawing period. Like I was watching a lot of different American cartoons, like in the late nineties, early aughts, but 
as much as I enjoyed them, it wasn't like nothing I was watching held on to me long enough so that like after I finished an episode, I was still like continuing the story in the back of my mind. But like Inuyasha like changed that for me. I like lived in Hawaii when I was a little kid. So like the time difference from like when the tsunami block started and like the anime shows came on at night was actually really early. So I was way too young to be watching this show or any of the anime I was watching in all honesty, but it was there and I loved it because it just looked so cool. And it was like just this cultural experience that like I had not known about. And like, there's so much context that was obviously lost on me as like a 10 year old kid, but even despite that it's just like the visuals and like the characters and like their relationships with each other were like really so compelling and that just kind of like drove me over time to like want to seek out more anime and like just see what else was out there in terms of like animated stories and then like eventually looking at different manga and like camping out in Barnes and Nobles for their like two for one sales <laughs> so like Rumiko Takahashi was like a big influence in terms of like the visual style that I like latched onto when I was learning to draw and like just figuring things out. And then over time, uh, I started to like watch and read a little less like shoujo um, and more shonen series where it's just like very kind of like episodic, like baddie of the day kind of stories. Um, sometime around middle school, I found Oyasumi Panpan and the work of Asano Inyo. And this, story i don't even really know how to encapsulate it in words but it was something that like was so profound when i was reading it all those years ago and it was definitely something that i probably wasn't comprehending in its full kind of like depth being that young but it was enough of an impact that like i still think about this story like so many times even before i started making comics it's just like it left kind of like an imprint in terms of the story that was being told um and i really want to make stories like that because it's very much a kind of like slice of life story but when we think of slice of life at least in my experience of things i would read before it was very kind of like happy go lucky it was always very like we're kind of like in dealing with the mundane of our lives and our friendships together and the most tension i would see from those kinds of stories were just like within the relationships but this story just kind of like got really into the depths of like the human experience and like dealing with mental health and just like internal conflicts and just like the less pretty aspects of life than growing up. But it, I don't know, it just like approached it in such a careful and caring way that like, I just could not stop thinking about the story. So as I like continue making my comics, I always go back to it and think about like, how can I make something that can leave as much of like an emotional impact as this did for me on like anyone else um, who's out there reading these things. And then Neon Genesis Evangelion was also a big influencer. And it's funny because I stumbled upon this anime when I would be watching Inuyasha like super late at night. <laughs> like my TV had an alarm. So I would like set the alarm for when Inuyasha came on. I would always sleep through the episode and wake up right when Neon Genesis Evangelion started. <laughs> so I'd be like super pissed, but also like, oh, this is still an anime. Let me see what this is about. Um, and I did not understand it. I mean, I feel like a lot of people who watch Evangelion now still don't understand it. I just finished watching the latest rebuild movie with one of my old roommates the other day. And we loved it, but we were asking questions the entire way through in the chat. Cause they're like, what is going on here? Um, but the story is just one of those things where it's like really approaching the psychological aspect of like being a human and existing and how our relationships with each other like form our identity and just kind of thinking about the meaning of existence in all these different ways. Um, it's just very meta in a way that I had an experience in anything else I've watched or read before. Um, and in that way, it reminded me a lot of Oyasumi Pan Pan, like the previous manga. So it was just really nice. And it was also my first entry into like mecha anime, even though they're like not really mechas, the Avas. Um, that's when I kind of like got to understand and see like, oh, there's like this whole 
kind of like subculture within the anime genre and manga genre of just like these giant robots and then like the kaiju and things like that. So it was just like a nice entryway to see all these other storytelling devices and like understandings of kind of like what a monster is and how a monster can be represented um, in a way that was very different from like, I guess like American superhero comics was kind of like my only equivalent exposure to that. And Demon Slayer, uh, I just got into that within the last year, even though I'd kind of like seen it around the internet. Um, but even though it's like so fresh, it like impacted me so much because what I really liked about this series is like the way that uh, Koyoharu Gotoge like really shows us this authentic depiction of like empathy and love and like how all these different characters are just like willing to fight for each other just for the sake of like wanting to spend the rest of their life together and like be happy together and it's like it's just so wholesome <laughs> despite all the like violence chaos that surrounds them and it was also nice because i really like a lot of historical um anime and manga but I feel like I've only really read and watched things that were like mainly in the Meiji and the Edo periods. And this takes place in the Taisho. So it was just like a different experience historically to kind of like see a story take place in that era, along with just like all the really great narrative devices and like wonderful characters that are in this series. Um, so when I think about how to depict relationships with characters and like relationships over time, I inevitably think about like Demon Slayer and like how how to use that as like a blueprint to make sure like the relationships that I'm building with these characters and that the characters are building with the audience are like authentic and relatable, even if the world might be like super fantastical in comparison. And there's two more anime after this, uh, but Ghost in the Shell was also one of those anime that would inevitably watched because I missed watching Inuyasha because I slept through the alarm. <laughs> but I really liked it just because it was the first thing I saw that was like super sci-fi basically. Um, I can't think of any show or anything I'd read up to that point by the time I started watching this in middle school where it was like just dealing with like fully cybernetic like bodies and like what the like politics of having such a different way of living entails. And I rewatched the series a couple months ago, like in its entirety and like all the different anime kind of like spinoffs on Netflix and things like that. And it's really nice how they all connect in this way of like critiquing like globalism and just like the politics of like the American industry and like uh, capitalism and all these different spheres, which I can understand so much more now and see how that contributes to the narrative. But also it still gives you the like really fantastical element of what is like cyber and biopunk as like a genre. Um, so that was, it was just really nice to see. Like, I feel like every time I was watching this Michelle, I was just like so hooked on the visuals. Um, but there's still enough of like within the plot to like guide me along and want to keep watching aside from just like, wow, this looks super cool. <laughs> And then Yu Yu Hakusho was like, I think I finished, or I started and finished reading the manga recently, but I watched the anime like years ago as a kid. Um, and I just re really liked it because it was one of the more kind of like shonen, like fighting martial arts style series that I'd watch. But it just had like such interesting characters and like Yusuke's like super rowdy personality. It was just like, I did not know anyone who was like so kind of obnoxious as Yusuke or like any of these other characters in their own ways, but it was still so authentic and genuine that I'm like, I want to see what happens to you. I want to see how long this battle is going to take and things like that. Cause it's just like very much one of those series where you have these different arcs and they're different battles and enemies and things like that. But what I loved about it was the characters are still developing through all of that. Um, so that was really exciting. And then the last one, I don't know the specific creator because there are multiple writers working on it for Toei Animation, but Mononoke is something I watched recently. And it's like an avant-garde anime. And 
it's just visually so beautiful um just in terms of like the different textures and it's very cinematic with its anime or with the shots it uses in the anime um so it feels like you're watching because they're all different vignettes but every episode still feels like a movie um so yeah these are just different visual inspirations and things about like narrative devices that have really inspired me up to this point and that i still go back to as i'm like working on new stories and figuring things out so i'm just like there was something in these stories that really clicked with me and i want to be able to have the chance to provide something for others that they could click with in a similar way um let me yeah. stop the share yeah, just looking at the cover art, I'm like, oh, I've never heard of this, but I'm very intrigued. <laughs> it is bizarre in the best way. <laughs> and it's a short series, too. So it's like you can kind of just sit with it as opposed to like commit to like 200 episodes, but not really understand what's going on. So there's just so much happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, thank you for sharing that. We did have a question come up uh, while you were talking about the art process, and it's from Hattie. For the web comics, Nikki, do you do the digital art or physical art and then scan them in? I do all digital now. I think the last thing I drew that was like on paper that I scanned in was a zine last March. Um, just as the pandemic began, I this probably sounds terrible, but I hate drawing on paper. <laughs> the <laughs> only time I do that is when I'm like teaching and I'm like drawing with my students or whatever um just because there's just so much in my process that i do in clip studio adding a whole other step that's like for me feels so disconnected would just like it annoys me like i need to be in clip studio where i know i could do like everything kind of at once <laughs> that looks like that looks like the only question that came in for that um Nikki, where can we see some of your work? Like, <laughs> you said you said like webtoons. Um, I know you have Instagram. <laughs> let me, ooh, where is it? Oh, let me just share really quick the website. Sure. There we go. Um, I thought it was in my notes, but it wasn't. But yeah, just art of .com. I could put that in the chat afterwards too. Um, that's where everything lives. Like you could read through excerpts of my zines, go straight to the web comics there and like pick where to read them. Uh, see some of my other straight illustration works. And then this is where I kind of just list all the different events that I'll be doing or like talks I'll be giving. Mm -hmm. um and then down here is my instagram feed so it's basically art of nikki rodriguez on all platforms awesome so teens you can visit the website and follow on instagram there's a lot of really cool things happening if you like process and viewing the the digital process nikki's instagram is the place to be if you want to get a good idea about that um thanks so much yeah, um you. yeah and then you're you you went to school with Sam, is that right? You oh, yeah. yeah, we did the <laughs> I'm a the same class. Program together. Yeah, can you tell us about the meeting? Um, like, tell us how you met at, um, at the school, and then what got you two talking and becoming friends after art or art school or after at the art after the art program? Sorry, I, mean, I feel our, like grad school was a blur. <laughs> our whole cohort was real tight like yeah all like 11 of us yeah because like, like uh, i know Samia, there's like who you mentioned was also in our cohort so, yeah um but yeah. i think our first meeting was like the pretty sure it's like the first day they do that little mixer with all the different cohorts in the morning before they send you off to class mm -hmm. but i feel like the kind of chances we got to really like get to know each other were after classes like hanging out at the park site or the, the little Zen garden where our like program was situated because we just got to decompress about everything that yeah. happened that day. <laughs> I mean, those, uh, those summer, uh, sessions were real time intensive. Uh, it's like boot camp. It was like drawing morning to night, yeah. except on the weekends, unless it was homework. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's a very, 
a unique low residency program where it's like you're in person basically for a month in San Francisco and then fall and spring is like virtually and it's like a mentorship semester. Um, but yeah, high intensity is the best way to <laughs> describe the summer sessions, but it also, because of that, like lended to all of us just kind of like banding together to get through it. <laughs> My question was gonna be um, as doing it something as drawing and creating art in your cohort and do, creating all this work, is it easy to get, um, is it easy to like, start to not want to create and draw or does like the motivation of like constantly creating keep you going like i want to keep making stuff i'm going to do my own thing like can you talk about that i mean for me it was a, a bit of both so uh there's a lot of times where i felt like yeah maybe i don't want to do this anymore like <laughs> Like it's a lot of work. Um, and then there's a lot of voices in a cohort giving lots of feedback, different feedback from teachers and each other and to the point where sometimes you like lose focus on, you know, what you want your like comics to be versus what uh, other people want your comics to be. Um, and for me, I, that was kind of hard to, um, like, parse uh you know it's hard to deal with it sometimes yeah i pretty much echo that too um just because it's not like the program was like strictly gearing us towards like oh you're gonna like only do cape comics for the big two like that was very much not what it was about at all but because so much of the program is like really dependent on like the ability to give feedback to one another in it being a low residency like program like that. Um, if you're coming at it from a different angle that people might not be used to, depending on how not even experimental the technique is, but just the kind of stories you want to tell. Um, sometimes people just don't know what feedback to give because it's not something they've experienced before. They're like not sure how to help guide you. So there are definitely moments where you just kind of feel like, okay, well, I guess I have to like do this sprint on my own for a while until it kind of like reaches that point where someone else might be able to hop in and like steer me better basically. Um, so there are moments of that in and out of the program, like as you're trying to, like Sam said, like parse all the different kinds of feedback you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that being said, Sam, let's see what uh, see yeah. what kind of art that you brought today that we were like dying to see. I, you gave us a little preview see, before. And I'm, when I'm, like see really it. excited. Yes, so I can see a really amazing splash page. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, my my presentation's a, a bit more loose. I was just kind of like go through like my journey as an artist. Um, so I just this is kind of a step in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. This was part from my uh, thesis project in the program. Um, just a double page spread. Um, but like, like Nikki, you know, I also grew up with Saturday morning cartoons, Toonami and stuff. My biggest inspirations being like Pokemon and Dragon Ball. Um, and it wasn't until I got a little older in college that I actually started reading manga, like moved from anime to manga. Um, started reading it more mostly because you know I, I couldn't wait for the story any longer like with Naruto and One Piece it was like um you know I need I need more of it I need more of it now um and uh when I uh decided to go to college I didn't really think like comics or manga were a possibility for me um but I, I you know decided to take art so um focused on learning how to draw realistically um or close to. Um, and then when I went to university, um, I decided to go into uh, uh, concept art and pre-production for like video games. I thought, you know, video games, that's a that's a career that could pay, pay me money. I, I can make money that way, right? Um, uh, so I, I did like uh, matte paintings, um, character designs, animal designs, uh, 
just a bunch of, uh, you know, playing with digital tools is it technically it's like a digital arts degree. Uh, so, um, like these are some of like, just like units and weapons and stuff for like little tiny games that we were trying to make. Um, but you know, unfortunately when, when I graduated, I think it was like in 2013, that was like when, uh, the B game industry sort of like fell out. Um, and there was like not a lot of jobs. So I was competing with people that were like actually much better than me. <laughs> and so I couldn't really get a job doing concept art without being also good at like 3D stuff because they wanted people to do like multiple jobs, which, you know, it's hard. I didn't really have that much interest in doing like 3D modeling and stuff. Um, uh, and so a few years after I had graduated and was working retail, um, pretty, pretty sad about my life, uh, uh, failing, uh, you know, being part of being an artist is fa failing a lot, you know, rejection. Um, I decided to draw my first comic. Um, this, this was it. This is what I used as my uh, application to get into the MFA degree. So I haven't actually been drawing comics that long. I think this was 2016 when I drew this, um, I, I guess five years. Five years feels like both long and short when when you think about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially like, it's like, are you working on a project or not working on a project? And right, yeah. That, I that's feel like, the five years will feel different. I feel like I've done like a lot more projects in five years, but also like, I feel like I should have more to show for it. But at the same time, it actually is a lot for five years i don't know um, yeah. um but um you know because in concert art um you learn to draw everything and anything because that's kind of what you wanted to you know that's kind of the demand of that job but also comics you have to draw everything and anything as well because um, mm -hmm. you have to draw like different shots and from different like camera angles so animals um um, lighting, um, costume design. Uh, I really love environments. Um, so these are some of the pencils that from that same first comic of mine. Well, actually, I guess it's part inks, but you can see some mm -hmm. of the pencil under it. Uh, yeah, we actually had um, two questions, both asked by the same person. Hattie wanted to know in all caps, how does he do that? How does <laughs> Sam draw wings? wings oh yeah. um, <laughs> the wings that we have in front of us I, I got really into drawing birds for a while um and I, I think it started with this comic first i like this guy is like supposedly guy like, can talk to animals and stuff um it can control them and he is like a nomadic cowboy who um ekes out justice in the science fiction west or something um and you know birds i don't know I, it's fascination with birds for a bit um, <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh like these are examples of like i think my first the first summer in the comics program um it's the first time i actually learned how to properly ink um in concept on pre-production i learned how to digitally paint more than anything but i had never really inked anything traditionally before like actual ink on paper um so these are uh, some examples from that class um i also you know didn't properly know how to panel and stuff um and to properly do pacing um and these are just examples from like doing like comic uh practices in that summer as well and then our like first our first assignment after the first summer was to like actually do an eight page comic to completion. And I was like, all right, this is my time to try to do like a little short manga thing. So I tried to do like black and white, um, comp like manga art. It's, uh, feels a little rough to me now looking back at it, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, um, so like I was gonna, this is briefly to show like some uh, what my pencils look like roughs. Um, they're like thumbnails, but blown up and, you know, where to place the dialogue and stuff. 
Um, and then taking it to um, an ink level, except one of our assignments was to emulate famous manga artist styles. So on the left is uh, Togashi, who did uh, Yu Hakusho and uh, Hunter Hunter. And on the right is emulating the style of uh, Akira Toriyama from Dragon Ball. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if we're seeing the image. We still have like the splash page with the um, with the winged figure. Oh no, really? Hmm. This might have a little tech. Maybe do the left to right on there. We'll get it. Oh, no. Let me. I was just going to say, like, maybe try uh, just screen sharing the window again. I don't know. That happens to me a lot. It, it'll be on the right window, but it won't move sometimes for some reason. Hmm. Can you see that? Same winged figure. Can you see that? There we go. Yes. Yes, we're yeah. back in business. <laughs> oh no, so you haven't seen any of the images? Oh no. Oh, I, was, I was flipping through them as I was talking. Oh, no. and, oh man. It's okay. okay. We're going to power through some Powering slides. through it, I guess. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I saw a couple of them before it froze for me, but I thought that was yeah. just my Wi Fi. <laughs> yeah. So we I didn't. Like, okay, oh, there we, did, again. we do in, appreciate and enjoy that winged figure slash page. Like I, I was just like, yeah, that's cool. Oh darn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. This was back when I was doing concept art. Uh, shoot. Okay. Well, I just wasted all your guys' time, didn't I? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. You're you're you were having us create with our imagination. Uh. <laughs> All right, this was the first comic I was talking about, the Western, um, that apparently you guys can't see. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, and this must be the inking. <laughs> yeah, these were the inkings. Yeah. It's a lot of ink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This was the manga, the first, the eight page manga thing I was talking about. Um, so that looks amazing. <laughs> oh, you really understand grayscale. That, I mean, yeah, I try. Uh, <laughs> like I did a lot of grayscale studies in uh, my, my undergrad, like, like paintings, um, trying to, because I had a teacher that was like, you know, in order to actually capture what an image looks like, you know, you want to do it in grayscale. Like, if you're going to practice, take every painting you see and then it's like turn off the turn off the color, you know, reduce the Nikki, help me. What's the word for it? <laughs> saturation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock down the saturation. saturation. Yeah. Um, so this was the, the sketch of the comic page. Um, with the placing of the balloon dialogue. And then this was the, the emulated styles. Left is Togashi and the right is uh, uh, Toriyama. And then this is the final version that I did of my own style. Um, and this is when I started doing uh, a web comic that I, I took down because uh, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, <laughs> That's real. It's just but, like, uh, it looks really good. You're like, nah. It, it looks, like, I, I think it does look good, but um, it, I wasn't happy with actually where the story was going. So I, I now oh, use it as like, a, okay. it's a prototype of the, it is a prototype of the thing I did get published recently. So it it does lead to that. This is the, the thesis, my thesis project that I did. Um, so it's a it's an epic fantasy, a sword and sorcery type deal. Um, trying to get that manga look um, mm -hmm. that I was obsessed with, uh, 
can definitely see the influence here. Yeah. Especially um, with like the panels and then like all the automatopoeia, like. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys have any questions, just jump in and shoot as I go through these pages. Here's the splash page from the beginning, but in black and white. Whoa. Um, it's like same wow factor, different vibe. Um, <laughs> forgetting comments. These are gorgeous. Loving the shadows. So nice. This is from like uh, a comic that I ended up doing for my like graduate reading for the program. Um, Wait, you had to read in comic school? <laughs> <laughs> we had to do a reading at the end. Yeah, where we had to actually read out our comic. Sometimes it's awkward. I, reading comics, I think, is awkward. Oh, it's uh, always awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're like reading out the sound effects. Ka -tunk, ka -tunk, ka -tunk, ka -tunk. <laughs> you're just storyboarding. Just pretend yeah. you're storyboarding. Um, and then like these pages, I, uh, I, I definitely was reading some uh, like European comics at the time uh, because like these are like like BD size. But I can't ever say the word for it. Um, but like they, there's like as much as like 16 to like 20 panels on a page compared to the normal. Um, we got a question here. Was there someone who did a particularly great reading of their comic? Oh, sure. There always is. I'm always so impressed <laughs> every single time. Um, like the people who bring in voice actors to like read oh, the different characters on. and things. Yeah. <laughs> Those are always the most fun ones. Oh, um, that sounds really cool and slightly intimidating. Uh, I was one of our thinking, producers uh, is like unfair. <laughs> particularly, there's one guy named uh, Sean Marney, um, yeah. who's like <laughs> that's who I was thinking of. And he is a comedian, like an onstage puppet comedian. So he like does comedy oh. with puppets. <laughs> um, and his reading was hilarious. <laughs> it was just great. Um, this was the the web comic, and I'm, I just call it a one shot now because I use it mm -hmm. as a proof of concept. Um, and I'm just like putting in random pages here from the comic. Um, mm -hmm. This is when I actually felt like I was starting to get a hang of it, get a hang of the manga look. Mm -hmm. um, properly learning how to use tones, I think, is part of it. Um, and I also, um, I ink traditionally with these pages. So this, this stuff's not digital. Um, this is me drawing with pencils. Um, I didn't and, know that, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and amazing. It's trying to master the <laughs> the pen, and I it's all inked with microns too. I I don't like the brush, so <laughs> so it's all it's all pens. Um, wow. Even this big splash on the left here, um, it took me ages because I've taken a little tiny pen and like shading those trees. Oh um, snap! So if you're doing this with the pens, um, how are are you doing that with the grayscale too? No, 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 oh. no. I'm not crazy. Uh, I did the, I did the grayscale digitally, um, uh, the tones digitally in Manga Studio, and the same thing with the, the lettering and the, the word balloons. Um, yeah, for a second I thought you were using like the zipatone that you could get at Kinokuniya, and I'm just like every that, time I've every time uh, I've gone to Kino so Kino, I can't actually see it. Here's a double page spread uh, from the, just, I just, I wanted to make a big explosion. I like, Aww, I learned, I learned how to like draw an explosion and I got obsessed with it for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Hattie is asking, um, what, what does splash mean when, I guess what uh, we were saying, splash so like page. A splash page is like when the whole page is basically one solid illustration, you know, yeah. um, it's like one, basically one panel that takes up the whole page. And a double page spread is when it takes up two. You see that a lot in manga. Mm -hmm. We have a comment here. Fiona Staples pages. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> her work in Saga, there's a lot of splash yeah. pages. Um, when the pandemic hit is kind of when I stopped drawing that webcomic. And then I took like must have been almost two months of not drawing anything. And this was the project I um, did to get back into drawing. It's just, it ended up being like only four pages. It was meant to be like a 20 page thing, but um, I, I lost interest in it. But it's like a post office, a postal thing where like these people were mutants to survive a virus. 
And so they were immune to an airborne virus and were the only ones that could go outside and deliver the mail. So, um, yeah, th that's what this uh, little project ended up being. Um, and then I did a, I did a 44 page one shot for um, Shueisha's Tezuka Award. It was their 100th uh, Tezuka Award in Japan and they opened it up to international entries for the first time. And so I thought it'd be fun to just try. I mean, I didn't place at all, but uh, <laughs> it was a nice challenge. Um, I was able to do all 44 pages, like pencil and ink in a month, which is crazy. It also reads right to left this time. So it starts with the, the far right and goes left. Um, that is an amazing challenge to take on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wanted to see if I could be as crazy as they are over there with their weekly releases of 20 pages, you know? Yeah, and something like thinking about as someone as, that also does art is, it's like, oh, you know, I don't really feel like drawing, don't really feel like creating, but then like a really great challenge for yourself is just like doing a contest, like call for artwork, call for entry, and just seeing like what parameters there are and then pushing those parameters and seeing yeah. if you can succeed in those. Mm -hmm. That page output is like wild because like I think Rumi, I don't know if this is like a recent number because I know she's got like one or two assistants now but I know Rumi Go Takahashi she like inks 15 pages minimum a week and I was yeah. like wow. yo I can't even get like six pages of my webcomic out like that's my <laughs> max for the month if I'm not working on other things it's just like mm -hmm. you get six pages a month and that's it yeah. isn't that wild though like some people are just like punching out stuff and there's like web comics where it's just like oh it's only three panels but it like updates monday wednesday friday yeah <laughs> yeah that output is insane like it's not really possible over here because <laughs> <laughs> they have like a lot of assistance and stuff to get, yeah. to get those things out um this here is um my recent uh uh, what I've recently got published. So um, I submitted a pitch to Saturday AM, which is a, a digital anthology that does like diverse manga. And it's mostly from like around the world, minus Japan. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's English language only. So um, they, um, and I participated in their summer manga thing. Um, uh, and like, I got to do the cover illustration for the issue that my story appeared in. And like, these are some of the thumbnails that, um, I did. And he's like, do either two, three, uh, seven or eight or it was something like that. And I so was like, any of the third is fine is what, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, um, this is like, I'm not, I, on the left there are my thumbnails and on the right is like a page from uh, i think it's page two yeah just to see what it looks like going from thumbnails to like a finished page mm -hmm. are those digital pencils or traditional penciling that you on have the, on the, the left they're traditional yeah traditional. i scanned them in yeah um and actually this project, um, I was going to do traditional again because I do like drawing with mm -hmm. pencil and ink with <laughs> pen, but I was on a tight deadline. So this is all digital. Um, I like that you actually show your thumbnails. Mine are, my thumbnails are so bad. I don't show my clients them. I show them my pencils. <laughs> yeah, I, I, they're supposed to be bad, but for some reason. But yours I, are so tight and neat. <laughs> That's because I'm like a perfectionist. I just can't help it. I've had like my <laughs> professors told me, Sam, these are too tight. You need to loosen up. What's wrong with you? Um, but uh, yeah. Um, so more thumbnails, finish page. Um, I like that page. No. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> So you can get you guys if you guys want to go uh, check this one out. You can go download. Uh, there's an app for Saturday AM. It's the most recent issue. Um, I decided Ooh. I would show what uh, a pitch packet looks like. Yeah, um, please. I'm trying to pitch this graphic novel um, called Street King. Um, it's uh, about a Latino kid who's um, got a, a penchant for getting into fights. Um, 
kind of he's my, he's actually inspired by Yusuke from Yu Hakusho. Um, and uh, it's like an esports VR style story. Um, his uncle runs an arcade. He tries out a fighting game and stuff and gets jumps into this like totally new world. Um, and he's good at the game. So um, these are some of the pages. Full color. That's all digital as well. Do you do your own coloring as well? I did. Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't have another art collaborator for like anything. So <laughs> no assistance. I, no, I do all the <laughs> art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Hattie says, I always like when the back of a book or manga has a thumbnail or pencil to ink color. Yeah, I like that stuff too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's always interesting to see professional uh, manga artists like work um, process. So it's like character sheets, the bios. Um, yeah, I think I end it with like see some uh, color action pages. Still trying to keep that manga influence, but this is a bit more American, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I got. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sam. Um, so just a couple of um, a couple of questions before we go. Um, as both of both artists you identify identify as like Latino and Latinx, mm -hmm. um, how how does how do those like lived experiences and narratives like show up in your art if they do? And um what what's some of the um, representation that you hope does come out when you um, when you create your comics? Yeah, I always want there to be, I mean, everyone wants to really kind of see their self in a, like a potential way, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I'm half, half white, half Mexican. Um, and for me, that experience is both of like belonging to both cultures, yet also kind of not belonging to either. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always, I always end up writing about an outsider um in my stories um and i feel like a lot of people sometimes feel that way too um, it's the kind of stories that i'm drawn to yeah and that's like a a life aspect that's like relatable to so many different kinds of experiences too like being biracial but also like being queer or something like that it's just like the sensation of like being an outsider in a place that you feel like you should be belonging in. Um, for my work, like I started off with zines and they were auto bio zines. So kind of like diary comics, mem memoir comics, just like literally exploring aspects of my identity. So like being Puerto Rican, being Puerto Rican who was born in the States, who's like got this disconnect with the history and culture and like what it is, what the experiences is of like diving deeper into it once I became an adult to kind of like understand more about myself through my history and culture. Um, and then with these two fiction projects, like I'm always, I feel like all my characters are going to be like queer and Puerto Rican or like just queer and Latinx in some way to like represent parts of my experience, but also just looking at kind of like the different trials that I've had to like deal with over life and kind of like finding ways to kind of revisualize that as a particular char character's like journey in the story. So it's like, it's always there. Sometimes it's more explicit than other characters and other stories, but it's just like the lived experience always inevitably makes it into the story somehow. I don't know if it's just me, but I can't hear Monica. Sorry, we're having some tech issues today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought so, it was my sound, so I was just like, Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's OK. Um, so another question came in from Hattie. Uh, she, they asked, do you have a favorite panel setup? From what I see, Sam has, Sam is, has a lot of overlap from panel to panel. Oh. Um, I uh, I generally 
like it, it to me it always depends on the the tone of the the story um like if people are just talking and nothing exciting is happening i generally keep it very simple like <clears throat> just grids right like perpendicular um um, and then once the like action starts kicking up, I slowly start to do angled panels until like it's full blown action. And then you got all the all the angle all the angular panels are going. Um, the the breaking the panels like with the character and stuff is <clears throat> tends to be like a manga trope. Um, yeah, they they do it <laughs> a lot. It's just the thing that I emulate. Um, but I do actually like it because sometimes I want to draw the full character's head. And it doesn't fit in the regular <laughs> composition I want. So I just break it and it works good that way. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same way with paneling. I hate panels. Like none of my zines were pretty <laughs> much paneled for until recently. So making two web comics that are paneled in a more traditional style was like I had to just like make a new brain to visualize it that way. Um I could show really quick kind of like Sam, I feel like I really gravitate more towards uh, manga type of st styling with panels in terms of like breaking out the panels um, or having in some of the more recent pages, having um, things just take up the bleed and the background behind the rest of the panels um, or just like being entirely panelless. Not only is just like a storytelling device, but I don't know. It's a lot more fun than trying to figure out how to stick things in boxes. Yeah. So open paneling and breaking out of panels is definitely my favorite type of paneling. So I try to do it as much as I can. <laughs> and Hattie also wanted to know if either of you offer classes. So, I mean, I'm not teaching anywhere specifically. Like last summer, I was teaching virtually through this arts organization in Berkeley. Um, and then I was teaching art classes through the JCC after school program. Um, but since I'm not like officially hired as a teacher anywhere, I don't do private lessons right now. Um, just by nature of the virtual scheduling. I did it for a little bit, but it, it's just hard to structure when it's not within a whole other kind of like programming. Um, I don't know if I'll do it this year, but sometimes I do the comics camp with San Francisco, the Cartoon Art Museum. There we go. It's in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. yeah. San Francisco yeah. Comic so, Art like, Museum. Yeah, a couple great. of other TCA artists have taught classes there. Like I think Alex Combs also did a class there. So I'd say like check them out. I might be there at some point, but there are also other great artists that go through there and teach during the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I... Uh... I sort of just recently moved. Um, my <laughs> life is still a little hectic with what, uh, like, submitting a, the last uh, project I did. And, um, you know, uh, I've been kicking around the idea of, like, doing Skillshare. Um, if mm -hmm. I do decide to do it, you know, I'll make an announcement on social media. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, uh, not, yeah, not at the moment. Any suggestions or tips how to um, as to get better as a comic as a comic writer, artist, flat animator? <laughs> um, I, I mean, YouTube is a great resource. I mean, I when I was in art like undergrad, I I literally almost learned how to digitally paint just by watching YouTube videos. Um, I'm sure there's like stuff on there for comics too. Um, but you know, I, I went to school for it. I did learn a lot through that. Um, but you don't really need to go to school you can find that stuff online. Um, yeah. Talking about whether or not school is worth it is, is, is weird for me because sometimes I do think it was totally worth it. And sometimes I, it wasn't worth it at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I feel like the industry within comics and just kind of like art industries, more general like animation and games just fluctuate so quickly that like while you might learn a lot, like going to an undergraduate or graduate program geared towards those disciplines, it's like you're honestly only getting like a tiny sliver of the pie compared to like everything else you need to know to be in these industries in the state that they're, are, they're in. Um, but yeah, like video tutorials, um, 
if you could find kind of like public workshops like through libraries or other kind of community spaces sometimes if there are zine fests around they'll have like a make your zine in an hour kind of type, type of workshop um just really experiment and also like look at your favorite creators and what they're doing like even if you're just kind of like i'm gonna trace this page to see what it's like to draw a panel and like stick a character in there with the words um just going through the process is super helpful like you could try drawing every day there are days where i do not draw at all i do i've never kept the sketchbook <laughs> but it's like if that works for you that's great it's like it can be super helpful but other times it's just like if that's not how your brain works at like retaining information don't sweat it because it's just like you'll find your way to go about it and then you'll get into the rhythm of it mm -hmm. um how do you ask how long both um wants to know how long you both have been drawing for probably well I, I first started learning how to draw like taking art classes in uh 2010 so it's been about 11 years i think for me it's been like eight years because i feel like i didn't kind of like draw seriously and take art seriously in terms of like pursuing it as a profession until i was graduating high school um so it was like in ap art where i was like oh i could just do this so i'm gonna do it um and that's when i kind of got a more structured understanding of like the discipline of drawing. So yeah, eight years now. I'm much older than Nikki. So. <laughs> I was the youngest in our I class. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, with everything, you're like, this is my sample. This is my first day. It's like, you've been drawing for thousands of years. You have mastered it. <laughs> which can be like intimidating the first day of class like all right everyone put like a sample of what your current work is and there's always that one student you're like <laughs> like mind-boggling go good art high school what the heck <laughs> yeah. i was like i thought we were all in beginning drawing guys <laughs> what <laughs> it's humbling though i will say that yeah that's what it's like when you go to art school at any level undergraduate or graduate because it's just like schooling is so different across the board in the states mm -hmm. and then across the world so it's like mm -hmm. we're all fishes out of water basically so you just kind of have to like start over and just take it with stride yeah oh yes and i i'm sorry i forgot sam is there a place where uh you had mentioned there's an app is there anywhere else where you can see uh, your art uh, you yeah you can see my art at um you want me to type it in somewhere or yeah if you want to type it in the chat and yeah, then we'll share it yeah we'll share it with our audience um, sorry I forgot to ask about that <laughs> very excited to see more of the splash pages and all the process so yeah um I'm on, I'm on Instagram at Sina's art um and I've got my own website Sina's art.com and it's with a z Sign sign as was a Z. Um, um and um yeah, I mean I'm also on Twitter, but I don't post art as much as just like dumb opinions on things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um is before we wrap up our artist alley segment today, are is there anything you want to promote? Um anything in the future coming out that we should keep an eye out for? um possibly but i don't really know yet I don't okay know. yeah yeah if there is let us know and we'll make sure we have access like access to a physical book and if it's available as an ebook see if we can get that ebook access so our viewers can see that as well um right now i'm not working on anything outside my web comics right now until i get some more flatting work um but mm -hmm. i finished one of my web comics so like horror one i didn't get a chance to show the pages but okay i took that right if you just go to my website to the web comics tab like you could see the the graphic novel that i'm pitching as i update it on webtoons and global comics um yeah pretty much just like on my website or my instagram art of nikki rodriguez that's pretty much where i put any updates about like progress pages or if i've got a project coming up with another collaborator cool 
Awesome. Well, that looks like all the questions that we have from the audience today. Sam and Nikki, thank you so much for being with us today with Sacramento Public Library and our artist Ally segment. We really appreciate your time and your talent and thanks for sharing your work. Like that's so inspiring to see. And I know the teens really enjoyed it as well. Um, so that's basically it for everyone here at Sacramento Public Library where books are just beginning. Don't forget, you can check out the artwork on the following Instagram handles and websites. And a reminder that you can also get books on art, anime, how to draw, draw manga at your local library. Ask a Librarian will help you get that book. We also have Craftsy on our databases through Libby, a great place that you can get free drawing and painting and visual art classes. Um, once again, this is Monica signing off for Sacrum Public Library, where books are just the beginning. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks <laughs> See for you having later. us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks to our artists.